Traveling with a baby can be stressful. It's something a lot of new parents stress about and feel unprepared for. I know that was the case for me. My wife Allie and I are experienced travelers and we become a trusted source for travel advice. But when our daughter Ruby joined our family, we had a whole new set of travel skills that we had to learn. We recently took Ruby on her first big trip with multiple flights, Ubers, rental cars, etc. And in today's video, I wanna break down some baby flight tips that really helped us navigate our daughter's first flight, her first time traveling, and ones that can help you nail flying with a baby. We're gonna to cover topics like booking your flight, a few notes about luggage, how to navigate airport security, some tips for the flight itself, and our essential baby travel gear. Booking your flight. You have two options if your baby is under two years old. The first is what's called lap child or infant on lap. And this is simply where you plan to hold your baby and or their seat is you. In this instance, you're paying for one plane ticket. And the rule is one infant per adult. The second option is to buy a seat for your child and strap them in a car seat in the actual airplane seat itself. Now this will obviously cost you more, you're paying for two plane tickets, but it could make sense for you. And make sure the car seat you're planning to bring is FAA approved. Okay, so which one is right for you? Well, it depends. Everyone's situation is different. Here's a few quick considerations. First, you'll definitely save money going the infant on lap route. However, if you're taking a really long flight, like a 12 hour international flight, it could be nice for your child to have his or her own space. Secondly, it's technically safer for your child to be in a car seat. Third, a great tip that I've heard, but I haven't tried it out, so don't yell at me, is when you arrive at the gate for your flight, ask the gate agent if the seat next to you is open, or even if you could be seated in a row where there would be an open seat next to you. If you think you could be seated with an empty seat next to you, bring your car seat to the gate. And if there's no empty seat available, you could simply gate check the car seat for free. Stick around for my car seat recommendation that is, in my opinion, the ultimate baby travel essential. I wanna talk very briefly about luggage. If you've been around our channel long at all, you probably know that we are carry-on only travelers. We travel almost exclusively carry-on only. We lived out of carry-on bags for six months. Our two most popular videos on this channel are all about traveling carry-on only. Well, that's changed, sort of. <laughs> Babies just need a lot of stuff. For this trip, we used a combo of checking and carrying on and I wanna break that down really quickly. Allie and I both carried on small roller bags with our own clothing, toiletries, all that stuff. We checked one bigger bag that was basically all the baby stuff. Diapers, clothes, a travel bassinet, bibs, extra bottles, all the baby stuff, that bag. And we put an Apple AirTag in that suitcase so we could track it down in case it got lost. Here's a breakdown of the baby stuff that I carried with me throughout our flight journey. The first is a personal item sized backpack that served as the diaper bag. The second is a baby carrier slash harness. And the third is a travel stroller slash car seat combo. And I wanna give you a, a few notes about each of those. Okay, you already know that you need a diaper bag. The only note that I wanna make here is to make sure it's personal item sized and it can fit under the seat in front of you. Now the harness was extremely useful at times, most specifically when I was traveling solo. We flew just me and Ruby our first flight, we met Allie. And I needed those extra hands when I was boarding, so I just strapped in with Ruby. I didn't always use it, but it was nice to have the option. Now one note, you are not supposed to have the baby strapped in for takeoff or for landing, but it can be great for boarding, for going through security, those times where you need an extra set of hands. Okay, our stroller car seat combo. This is the Duna, and it's awesome because it's both a car seat and a stroller, and it goes between those in a matter of seconds. We invested in the Duna stroller specifically for travel, and to be honest, I had avoided this stroller as a daily driver because I do think it has a couple of drawbacks. However, this was one of the best items we could have purchased for traveling with Ruby. The stroller just turning into a car seat and then back into a stroller with the touch of a button is very, very convenient for those times where you're gonna to need to grab an Uber from the airport, jump on public transportation, etc. Navigating the airport, I mostly pushed Ruby in the stroller and then when it was time for the flight, I gate checked it for free. Let's talk about getting through airport security. This part of travel is already stressful for many, many people and there's a lot of questions and concerns. Here's tip number one. Baby formula, pre-made bottles, breast milk, and bottles pre-filled with water can go through the TSA, and the standard 3.4 ounce liquid requirement does not apply to these items. The same goes for meds for your baby. Each time we went through security, I went through with one pre-made bottle and three or four additional bottles that were pre-filled with the right amount of water 
all in the diaper bag. Now, the TSA will want to take a look at the liquids. Just be ready to be pulled aside after going through, and they're likely to swab the outside of these pre-filled bottles to test them. They will want you to fold up your stroller and in most cases put it on the conveyor. The rest of the process is basically exactly the same as normal. I would recommend carrying some sort of identification for your child. I brought the birth certificate and obviously if you're flying internationally, the baby, no matter the age, is going to need a passport. I will say having TSA Pre was so helpful with the baby. I just had way less stuff I had to take off, take out, etc. Let's talk about boarding the plane. Before you board, first of all, make sure that your child is in a clean diaper. Trust me. And if you plan to gate check a car seat or stroller, make sure that you talk to the gate to get that item tagged. Then as you board, make sure to drop the stroller off at the bottom of the jet bridge. Most airlines pretty universally allow parents of young children to pre-board or board the flight very early. It varies by airline and it may not always even be announced. Personally, I loved having that extra bit of time to get situated, but especially if you're carrying on a bag of any kind, it already sucks when they run out of overhead bin space. Imagine adding a crying baby to the mix. It felt good to have that just little bit of extra time. Okay, when it came to getting on the plane, I was pretty nervous to be honest with you about being those people that like no one wanted to be seated next to. But number one, Ruby did really, really well. And number two, people were a lot nicer and more empathetic than I was expecting. One thing I noticed that surprised me was flight attendants wanted to help. One flight when Allie and I were pre-boarding, a flight attendant saw Ruby, said, I'll take her, and escorted us to our seats, allowing us a minute to get our bags in the bin, get situated, and we ended up having a lovely conversation with her. Now this won't always happen, but it really was a pleasant surprise. Okay, here's some flight tips. Let's start with where to sit. Now, there's no one right answer here, but sitting in the window seat was pretty nice. Look, there's pros and cons to the window versus the aisle, but ultimately we chose the window for a couple of reasons. Our goal was to get our daughter to sleep as much as possible on these flights. And if we were on the aisle and a person seated to the inside of us needed to get up to go to the bathroom, I really didn't wanna to have to stand up with our sleeping baby, potentially waking her. It was also really nice to have something to lean up against while holding her for a prolonged period of time. Now, it's not a huge deal because she's only five months, but the prospect of distraction by having something to see out the window was appealing as well. Okay, let's talk about timing. Time your flights with feedings and try to avoid flying during those times you know your baby is fussy, their witching hour. Babies can't pop their ears, so I had heard to have them drink a bottle or suck on a pacifier during takeoff and landing, and that worked like a charm for us. You'll wanna have some entertainment options ready, such as books, toys, etc. Not every airplane has a changing table, and even if your airplane does have one, that doesn't mean that all of the lavatories are equipped with one. So here's two tips. One, look for an icon like this on the lavatory door. That's gonna be the one with the changing table. And number two, make sure you've got a portable changing pad in your diaper bag. Speaking of which, we put together a list of all of our baby travel essentials, which you can see in this next video. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.